Sometimes the webinar goes a little more than 45 minutes, but I generally try to keep it to 45 minutes. We, it looks like we have about eight or nine people. So now can everybody see the, uh, the coding den logo here, intro to HTML, CSS and JavaScript or no, actually, let me do this. <clears throat> okay. Everybody should see. Everybody should see um, the coding den intro to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript root Rich Casella. Can everybody see that? Please confirm that. Okay, good. All right, let me blow this up so I, I can see all you guys. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, uh, we had a smaller webinar today with nine people. That's totally cool. Now, Okay, in this webinar, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the the uh, basics, absolute basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, I trust me on this one. I've been doing music and I've been doing coding for, since 1982. And I could tell you that in all these endeavors, the initial, the foundation, the initial stages of learning something are really, really important because how you think about something is going to be important as you grow and develop and understand things in a, 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 on a deeper level. I call this governing concepts. Any endeavor, any endeavor I find has governing concepts, basic things that you need to understand that will guide you through the process when you get to the point of confusion, because code is going to confuse you. Code is going to really tax your your intellect. You're not going to understand. You're going to get frustrated. Why isn't this working? I'm trying to run it. But, you know, you find that a backslash which is supposed to be a forward slash. Um, Arnov, hold on. I'm going to take questions in a second. Um, it can be extremely frustrating. You're going to spend a lot of time debugging and if you have a fundamental understanding of how these things work, it's, it's going to be an easier process. Now, I find that there's a tragedy in coding, tragedy, terrible thing. And it's the worst thing you can do sometimes is if you have a problem coding is ask somebody who knows about coding. Weird, isn't it? It's almost like... It's almost like that thing in New York City where there's millions of people and everybody's lonely, right? Go figure. Why? Um, I think the reason why this is is because the more you understand something, the better you get at something, the farther you go away from somebody who's just starting out. So instead of explaining something to somebody in a way where they can understand it, you're basically explaining it from your perspective, um, and they never understand it. So the goal of this webinar is to take you from abs to the absolute basics of these three very, very important languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and, and make you say, okay, I basically get this. I understand this. And as time goes on, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, refining this webinar to the point where everybody's like, you know, I got it. I understood what he was saying. Now, if you have an intermediate level of coding right now, this probably isn't for you. I want absolute basics and uh, people who just take it from scratch people who are like i want to understand what's going on here and um um that that's who i'm talking to so it's 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 the basics of coding websites not coding games i mean if you're here for games um that we'll be doing that in the future but this is this is websites games are javascript so um this is html css and javascript and um, games are basically exclusively JavaScript. So perhaps are enough, perhaps you want to code games. Am I right about that? I actually have made a few games. You have coded a couple of games? Okay, so, all right. Well, just bear in mind, this is for the absolute basics, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Judith, do you have any experience at all coding? No, I, you know, um, I don't have personal experience, but I really want to learn it. I, I did a... Uh, a bit of a Python course this summer on Coursera, but I just want to learn it. So, okay. Feel like you did can't you, be too, you, you can't be too old for it. <laughs> oh, that's that that's you could learn. Oh, absolutely. That's a whole yeah. it's, it's a little intimidating being in this room with so many young people, but I like I'm I'm pretty excited. 
stick with me, Judith. You you will be dispelled of that that ridiculous age limiting belief yep. instantaneously. You're I didn't start really getting into code until I was 30, 35. Okay. I'm excited. And, um, uh, believe me. Uh, just stick with me on that one. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, the rest of you, um, you could choose to keep your video off. That's fine. Okay. So uh, I'll be asking you guys questions from time to time, but I have to be honest. I do favor people and talk to people when their videos are on. So Arnav, um, Emily, Emily, I mean, I'm be ask, I might ask you guys questions. Um, good to see you, Jack. Thanks again for everybody showing up. Okay, intro to HTML, JavaScript, and CSS with Rich Casella. Now, listen carefully to um, how I've divided this webinar. Two parts. We're going to go over the uh, two parts. Each part has three sections, a summary of HTML, a summary of CSS, and a summary of JavaScript. Now, you might actually even want to jot this down if you have a pen and pad handy, because these are to understand these concepts is really the the, the fundamental basics of all of coding in, in coding websites. So part one, once again, HTML. There are two main things in HTML. They're called tags and attributes, tags and attributes. And in the CSS section, we have two main things, properties and values, okay? In the summary of JavaScript, we have events and functions. So let me say those words, let me say those six words very slowly, so, you, so, so they're in your mind and they're in your RAM, your, your short-term memory. Tags and attributes, attributes, HTML. Properties and values, CSS. Events and functions, JavaScript. Okay. So then part two, we're gonna go, we're gonna go into actual code samples in something called a sandbox. Um, and I'm gonna give you literal code samples of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So part one, I'm gonna tell you what these things are. Then part two, you're gonna see what these things are and what they do. So it's gonna be important that you have a basic foundation through part one to guide you through part two. Once again, let me, I don't mean to be redundant, but I, I want you to really remember these, these, these things. Tags and attributes, properties and values, events and functions. So uh, my first interactive question, Arnav, what are values part of? Tell me what values are part of. You remember? Oh, CSS. That's right. Emily, what are attributes part of? Attributes. HTML. That's right. And anybody tell me functions are part of what? What's a function part of? JavaScript. JavaScript, exactly. Okay, so without that, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this Coding Den logo, and I'm going to bring you to the Guitar Den, which is what I started out with. And I'm going to give you um, a real, real-time description of what's going on with a website. Now, what you guys see here, let me scroll up and down with the guitar, Dan. You have a bunch of images here. You have a bunch of text here. Here, you have, let me show you the text. Where's the text? It should show up here. Uh, see the text? Live student performances. Then you have an image there and you have a bottom. Now, what you guys see is just basically a, a, a flat website. And it, it, it's basically, you, you see it as a whole. But when I see it, what I see are sections, sections of a website. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to annotate this right here, and I'm going to, I'm going to draw squares. So this section up here is the menu. Now, this section here is the body of the website, okay? So these, these are basically squares that are all put together. Let me go down a little bit here. And this part right here, there are actually two more sections. The left section is basically a square. It's treat the, 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 the website code treats a website as just a bunch of squares that are put together, just like that. Now there in, in the website code, you're gonna hear you're gonna hear terms like div tags, div tags. Div tags are the bookends that 
determine these sections of a website. And we'll get into that a little later. Just put it in your R, your your R, your RAM in your mind because we're gonna we're gonna see the code a little bit later. As we go down here, we actually have more sections. We have a left and a right section with text in it. And then all the way down here, we have the footer section. So again, we have a menu up here, all the way up here is a menu, then we have a body, and then we have right and left sections. So that's an example of an actual website. <clears throat> okay, so without further ado, let's get into the, the HTML version, the HTML description of a website. Now, HTML, I like, I analogize it to a human body. Let's look at this human body for a second. HTML is the skeletal system, is, is, is analogous to the skeletal system. Your skeleton, your, your, your bones hold your body up. It holds your body in place. It holds the internal organs. It holds your eyeballs. It, 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 it houses inside. It, it holds your skin up. Everything is really, that's the structure. HTML is the bone structure of a website. Remember I told you how these, um, these sections of a website are squares and then you have a uh, square up here. That's like the skeleton. A, a website is treated like a skeleton. <clears throat> HTML stands for hypertext markup language, the skeleton of a website. So let's look at this first thing, tags right here. Tags are HTML code that define every structure of an HTML page. Now let's look at this for a second. I'm gonna be annotating a lot of stuff here. See these tags right here? This is an opening tag and this is a closing tag. Now we have the greater, we have the greater than or less than signs and inside those tags, inside those signs are, is text. It's tags that will determine the HTML of the website. You have an opening tag and you have a closing tag. Now, this forward slash right here that you see, let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of some of that uh, stuff here. Do you see this, this forward slash right here? That denotes that the tag has been closed, okay? This denotes that the tag has been is, is opening. Do you remember I told you about those div tags? This is where it happens, right here. Now let's actually literally go into let's 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 look at some of these tags in the h in the w3schools.com reference. This is basically a reference a website an excellent reference website of every single tag in HTML. So let's look at this side of the screen right here and we have all kinds of we have we have all these kinds of tags that encapsulate HTML. Now right here Let's go up to that div tag. Div tags are incredibly important. This is what will determine the structure of the website, of, of a web page. So let's go down here and look at an example. Okay. Let me try to get this, let's move this a little bit here. Just so we can see everything here. I'm always having space space issues. Okay. So here we have an opening div tag right here, and we have a closing div tag, opening and closing div tag. Inside that div tag are it are or is all of the text and the elements that happen inside any of those sections that I described a little earlier. Remember the left section of the page, the right section of the page the menu of the page inside those div tags, these div tags right here is all the stuff that you will see. So a website is divided into sections with tags, one of them being a div tag. <clears throat> does, does that make sense? If anybody has any questions at this point, please let me know. You could just put it in the chat and I'll check it out and I'll try to answer your questions the best I can. Now, an example, we have an H1 tag right here, which stands for heading one. That's the actual text that happens in the website. 
Then we have a closing H1 tag right here. And inside you just have the word hello. The text is hello. And the output would literally be the word hello. H1 is an opening header one tag. And note the forward slash, which closes the tag. Now let's move on. Uh, let's talk about, I use Sublime and Notepad to use HTML. Are those text editors good? Notepad, I, I use Notepad++ myself. Notepad++ is a text editor. And that's where you would, you would I perform. I use normal Notepad and Sublime. Okay, that's excellent. Notepad is great and it's free. <clears throat> Notepad is great. We're going to get to Sandbox in a second. Now you're going to see great stuff. Attributes. Let's talk about attributes. After a tag, you will have something that is called an attributes. Attributes that can, it basically it contains additional information placed inside an opening tag. So let's look at this tag here, this opening tag, which is IMG. Somebody tell me what IMG stands for. Tell me, anybody. Image. 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 Wow. See how code is intuitive? Intuitive means you could look at the you could look at what it says and say, I could kind of get that, right? When you look at the code, you're scared of it. But then when you see something like IMG, it's like, does that stand for image? And you're like, of course it does. SRC stands for what? What is SRC? Nobody? SRC. Image. Source. Yes. Thank you, Arnav. Thank you. Source. Image source. So the image opening image tag will have an attribute of source and the source has, you have to have an equal sign and, and an opening quote, and you will point to the locate. Listen very carefully what I'm about to say. You will point to the location of the image file that's on your server. Inside the quotations is a link that will point to the image that's sitting on your server or the link, the URL to the image. We're gonna see an example of this a little later. So we have image source equals quote mydog.png. PNG is a is a what? Who knows what PNG means? A type of um, photo formatting. Uh, a type of formatting. Well, I'm, I'm, the word I'm looking for is it's a type of image. Can anybody else tell me any different types of image files that you might see? What? Uh, JPEGs. Yes, exactly. So if you see .png, .jpg, .tif, those will always be images. Now give me an example of an audio file. Anybody? MP3. Excellent. Anything else? MP, uh, MP3, um, an image, uh, wave file, WAV. These are, these all de uh, denote image files. How about a video? What's a video? How about, how about a, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I said, I said M audio. How about a video? Anybody take, take a guess what a video file might be? <clears throat> MP4. MP4 file. Okay, great. So an attribute will come after. Now, now it's important to note two things I want to mention. Coding is very unforgiving. Okay? Doesn't forgive you. Forget the quote mark and what happens to your website. It doesn't work. The whole thing breaks. Forget a forward slash right here. Forget one of these. Forget this dot right here. You won't be seeing that image file. Okay, so in this particular case, my dog dot ping is, is actually just a, a photo of a dog looking at you. The source attribute tells the browser to define the image based on whatever follows the equal sign. Definitions in code are so difficult to understand. I, it took me a year to understand what an alpha channel was. Oh, read, read the definition of an alpha channel. Oh my goodness, the actual literal what an alpha channel is, is the simplest thing in the world. But the definition, whoo, it'll really boggle your mind. Trust me. Okay, so that's our HTML section. Let's look at this one more time. 
We have HTML is the skeleton of the website. Give me an example of a, a, a tag. What was the tag that I said? What, what was that tag that broke up the website into sections? Div. Who said div? Me. I love it. Div. That's a div tag. Okay. And we have tags and we have attributes. What closes? How do you know that a tag is closed? Anybody? A slash mark. Exactly. A forward slash. That says it's closed. Okay. Now let's move to the CSS section. Anybody know what CSS stands for? Cascading style sheets. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if the HTML is the skeleton of a website, the CSS is how it looks. I liken it, if it was a human body, the CSS would be the skin color, the hair color, the eye color, those types of things. So if, if you were to look at a website, let's go over to, let's go over to the guitar den here. Look at this color of this text right here. It's red. Look at the color of this text. It's white. Look at the size of this text right here. Look at the color of this, of this uh, menu, the background color. All right, that is all CSS, cascading style. Look at, the, look at the little puny text right here. We in the recreation departments, blah, blah, blah. The font, font is CSS. Font size is CSS. Font style is CSS. Background color is CSS. All of this kind of stuff. How it looks. Look at this color, this nice pink, uh, this nice purple color right here. Now, not necessarily this image. See this guitar right here? That's an actual file. That's a JPEG file that's used as a background for the website. So that really wouldn't be considered CSS. That's actually, I, I would, con it's kind of a hybrid of CSS and HTML. Sometimes these things work together, but CSS would be how the uh, color, <clears throat> color, font size, font style, all that good stuff. Okay. Okay, so let's go, let's go into examples. Now, inside the HTML element, H1, what does that stand for? I forgot. Tell me what H1 stands for. Header then, one. Header, header one, exactly. That means text. It's a heading. Okay, now after that heading, after that heading element, let's call it an element, what you would do is you would take the word style and you would put it right after there with an equal sign and in quotations, you would have the property and the value the property and the value. And that will denote the color of this text, a blue heading. Now see, we have this H1 closing tag right here. We have an H1 opening tag. So contained within the HTML element is style, the CSS, which will denote the um, color of the font. So it couldn't be simpler. Here we'll have style equals color blue. And then the text will be a blue heading and the output will look like this, a blue heading. Easy, right? Let's go down to this one. Does anybody know what P stands for? In, in paragraph. Paragraph, right. That's just standard text. Par the, the, the P element will just be standard, P tag will just be standard text. So if you put style after the P equals quote color colon red, you will see this, you will see this output right here. I think, I think we have a question. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's good. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let me go back for a second. I just want to, now at this point, does anybody have any questions about HTML, CSS? Is it very, very clear? What, Judith? Just like while we're here, how would you change the font size? Let's, um, we're going to get into that. Okay. We're going to get that. That's next. This is just an overview. <clears throat> okay, now here's, now remember, it's really important you understand this because we're building this foundation. If you don't understand it now, it's gonna get more confusing as we go along. But I got, I, my, my gut tells me that we're all on the same page. Paul, Gene, Steph, Avi, Walter, feel free to chime in at, at any time. You can say anything you want. <clears throat> Let's move to JavaScript. JavaScript is the programming language of the web. Now, remember how HTML was the skeleton? Uh, Arnav, you have a question? 
Uh, JavaScript was actually the first ever language I ever did, and I'm pretty good at it. It's interesting. It's interesting you started with JavaScript. That's like starting with algebra and then going backwards to arithmetic, I think. I, I think. Anyway, so HTML is the skeleton. CSS, the style, the look, the hair color, eye color, skin color. JavaScript, the internal organs. That's, that's what processes stuff, okay? This JavaScript is the, it, it is, can be defined as the interactive nature of a website. When you correspond and interact with a website, um, that's all JavaScript. Let me get rid of that annotation right there. It's bothering me. Okay. <clears throat> Let me give you an example. It allows forms to collect user input. Forms to collect user input. Now, Arnov, this is important. Uh, this is where you create games. Now, we're going to be getting into this. You should pay attention to the coding. Then, HTML to create games. No, no, no. You don't use HTML to create games. You use uh, JavaScript to create games. JavaScript is one of the, uh, of the languages that you use to create games. So uh, it's the programming language of the web, the internal organs, like your digestive tract, your, your heart. It's the things that 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 <clears throat> process food your nervous system your circulatory system okay let me give you an example of javascript okay let me get rid of the annotation here oh okay hold on. let's go back to the guitar then log in okay now see this text box right here that's actually an html element but the text box is going to is going to capture a username and a password. And once I click this button, there's where the JavaScript comes in. It's no longer it's no longer how the page looks. It has nothing to do with how it looks, it has nothing to do with the font size, the font color. It has nothing to do with the structure of the page. You see this box right here? That's just a div that that's just a div section of the website. That's the skeleton, right? Now I click on that login. Now we got some interactivity. This is going to send all this information to the back end of the, uh, of, and then it's going to say, do we know this guy? Is this password correct? It's going to look in a database and say, he's saying his name is Rich C and he wants to log into this guitar den, but we're wondering if, if we have this information saved. So it's, it's interactivity. It's dialogue with the website. See when you, all this menu information here, if I click on curriculum, if I click on all this stuff, it's going to pull up different pages. JavaScript, all JavaScript. How the page looks, CSS. The structure of the page, what? HTML. Nice, excellent. Okay, so let's move on. Now that you understand that and the foundation, let's look at what JavaScript actually looks like. This is where it gets confusing. <clears throat> However, fret not, because we're going to break this down to simple concepts. Let's look at these two sections right here, okay? These are the two things that we need to be aware of. Now, button, you see, oh, what, what's this over here? It looks like we have an HTML, some HTML information here, right? The button element is an HTML tag. So, a button that you see on the website is actually HTML. It's standard HTML. But look at what we have here. We have something called on click. On click is JavaScript. Uh, it's called a JavaScript event. All right. And then after the event, does anybody know what this thing is right here? Add my email. Can anybody take a guess? Uh, it saves uh, email inside the database. What is it called? A function. That's correct. It's a function. So what we have here is, is an event, and what we have here is a function. Now, when you look at it, it couldn't be simpler. It, it's just button HTML. It's an HTML element with an on-click event that fires a function. Now, when, you, when, when, we, when we looked at that, when we looked at that guitar den over here, when we looked at the guitar den, we remember that we saw that we saw that button, right? There's your button, there's your HTML element, and it's a button. It's a simple button. <clears throat> the, 
the button, the button listens for an event. Okay. The event fires a function fires, meaning it activates a function. Okay. Let me say that one more time. The HTML element listens for an event. When the event happens, which is the click, it activates the function that's contained within maybe one line of code, but the actual, the actual processing of the information does not happen in that line of code. It doesn't happen in the line of code. It's almost like your stomach capturing food. Your stomach just says, all right, I'm capturing the food. Now the actual digestion of the food is a whole different story. <clears throat> That'll happen through all these internal organs, but your stomach kind of facilitates it, right? It holds the food and says, okay, we're gonna say, we're gonna digest this food and send it all over your body. It's the same thing. This line of code just says, okay, one, once again, the HTML element is listening for an event that will fire and activate a function. So what happens is, let me annotate this. The function will happen right here. It will go down to another line of code and it will look for this, obviously this word function couldn't be more self-explanatory. And it will say, ah, here's the add my email function. And here in, in now th this isn't the actual, uh, this is just a, a skeleton right now of what a function looks like. There'll be all kinds of code ha here that will tell the computer what to do with that email. What do you do with the email? Do you add it to a database? Do you send it back to the person? Do you, um, do you send them a special email in response? These are all things that could happen in, in, in JavaScript. So once again, the on-click event tells the button to execute, add my email when the button is clicked. On-click is what? Event. Nice. Add my email is what? Function. Excellent. 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 So now we have an excellent background of HTML, JavaScript, and <clears throat> HTML, which is the skeleton. CSS, which is the hair color, how it, how it appears, hair color, eye color, JavaScript, the internal organs. And now we are off to the sandbox. This is where it gets a little difficult, guys. This is where it gets a little challenging because we need to, we, we're going to capitalize and we're going to, <clears throat> we're going to, uh, we're going to apply every, everything. Thank you, Robin. Robin, give us a wave. That, that's my girl, Robin, right there. Hello. Robin is my support, my backbone. She's my HTML, my skeleton. <laughs> okay, so what now, what is a sandbox? What are we doing? What is this thing, right? A sandbox is a is just what it says. It's a sandbox. It's a website that you guys can go on codesandbox.io. Everybody, you could go on there right now and you all could Yes, please. I, I see, Jack, you're writing that down, aren't you? Okay, everybody, write that down because code sandbox is really important. This is where you can play. You can play. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to code sandbox and we're going to create a sandbox. Now, you don't have to worry about all this nonsense over here. You don't have to go all the way. You could just go to static. Okay. Static right here. All right. Now this is where this is, this is essentially, there are, there are basically three, three sections of the sandbox. Here are the files that we're going to be working with. Index.html is your standard HTML page that will contain all the code. It's that's, that's the main file index, the index. <clears throat> now there are really no, you don't have to worry about package.json or sandbox.config that, you know, many files aren't going to mean anything. You're, you're going to learn that in HTML, you really only end up focusing on one page. You only use really four or five different tags. It looks intimidating, but once you, once you start working with these things, you only start using just a couple of things. All of this right here that you see, doc type HTML, HTML language, English, boilerplate, boilerplate. That means that you, it's, it's really, it's necessary and unnecessary at the same time. All the head information here, meta, meta name, meta HTTP, 
superfluous, not necessary. Um, title, static, template. It's just the type. It's just the title of the page. What we're really concerned about is what happens in the body tags, the body tags right here. Okay. So we're going to get rid of this and we are going to, I have, I have a pre, um, pre done code. Okay. Let me get rid of that. Hold on for one second, guys. I am going to, oh my goodness. People were joining me. I, I didn't even know. I'm going to paste all the code <clears throat> and then we're going to look through this one by one. We're going to go through the actual code right here. Okay. I'm, I apologize if, if you got here late. We actually only have a couple of more minutes, but I do, I do want to get through this here. I want to give you guys a, an example of the code. Um, so let's go line by line here. Now you should know, you should start to see what's going on here at this point. Now you, we're going to start from line 10 and go all the way down to line 28. So 10 to 28, we really only have a, a very small, a, a small amount, 18 lines of code. And then there are some blank lines like this. It really, there's only like 10 lines of code here. Now, what is this going to do? What is, what is all this code going to do? What it's going to do is we're going to look at this section, which is really the result of all the code. Now we're going to, we're going to go here and we're going to, we're going to save the code. This is the result of it. You're going to see hello world, which is purple. Look at this cute panda. And then you have an image of a panda. You have a link to the pandas Wikipedia page. And then you have the JavaScript example, the interactivity. Remember I told you about interactivity. Here it is. You want to change the picture. We're going to add a different URL into this text box and we're going to click this and the image is going to change. That's the interactivity. So once again, let's think about that for a second. We have the structure. Look at, look, we have an image over on the left here. We have some text here. That's the HTML. Then the CSS is the color of the font, the size of the font, the style of the font. And then the JavaScript is the interactivity. When you enter the code into this uh, text field here, and it, it will literally change a picture. Now we're going to do that in a couple of minutes, but I do want you to just take a look at this code here. Look down here for a second. Do you see all this stuff right here? If these are called, these are comment, th these are comments right here. This is code that, that will not be recognized by the computer. It's, it's, it's off limits. It's say it, the computer says, if you see a, <clears throat> a, a less than sign with a explanation point, and two dashes. That means everything after that is your comments. I could put, I can put anything. I could put the rain in Spain, blah, blah, blah. And the computer will not recognize that because those are my, my special notes that, that are, uh, that are only important to me. <clears throat> but these are, these are links that I've, 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 uh, worked out for this for this particular example. So let's go up to the top here. All righty. H1 style color orchid hello world. Okay, I need I need some help. We're going to look at this HTML element right here, hello world. Please somebody tell me what color to change that hello world to. Anybody? Blue. What color? Blue. Blue. Okay, I have to change it to blue. Color. Okay, let's save that. Voila. Did you see Hello World just change over to blue? What is that an example of? Remember, what is it called? 
CSS. Yes, CSS. That's CSS, cascading style sheets. It's the look and the feel of the site. Okay, so H1 is what? What does H1 mean? Header one. Header one. And this style word is is a um <clears throat> is an attribute that will tell you that we're about to change the style of the web page. Let's go to H2. H2 is heading two, which is going to be a uh, little bigger of a font size. Now, somebody asked me about the font size right here. You have style equals font size. That is a, now does any, I'll be very impressed. Um, does anybody remember what we call, what font size is called? There are two things in CSS that we studied. What, what, what were they? They were what? Let's go back here. Properties and values. Excellent. So excellent. So font size is a property, right? And font size is a property and 50 pixels is what? That would be a value. Yes. So tell me, how big do you guys want this? Look at this cute panda font, uh, font uh, text to be. 64. 64. Okay, let's change it to 64. Whoa, look at that. Did you guys see? Look at this cute pan just got a lot bigger. Let's check, let's make it really small. Let's go down to 14. Save it. Ah, look at that. Now it's really small. Okay, so <clears throat> now let's go down to let's go down to the actual image. Now we have an opening image element and the ID. Now it's going to be really important that we that we have a name for this image. So we've basically called this image. We've called this image image. Couldn't be easier. We have a style max width property and value of 200 pixels. And then now you guys should be starting to remember these things. SRC, which which means what? What is what is SRC? Source. Source exactly. And then we have a link to panda.jpg, which is a link to the location of the image on our server. Now, in this particular case, in the sandbox, I dragged and dropped the panda image from my desktop into the file directory. And here you see panda.jpg. So the source is looking for panda.jpg in my main directory. That's what's happening online. 14. Now, br forward slash is an example of a self-closing tag. Um, it's an exception to the rule, but basically br closing tag means you just want to, you want to just break the line. You, you do, if, I, if I took that out, if I took that out, You would see this it, this text right here go to. Yeah, see, visit, see how it's all screwed up right there. So we need that break. We need that break tag right there. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, what happened there? Okay, so now it goes back down. All right, now here's an important thing. A is a anchor tag. It's an it's an anchor tag that will link to an outside web page. A href is is a, is an attribute that <clears throat> will point to another website so in the quotations you have the link to another website so the text is please visit my wikipedia page now that's down here please visit my wikipedia page so a is an anchor tag that denotes that tells the computer that you're about to you're going to go out to a separate page a href equals quote https that https that that is a url so let's let's click this link right here ah it takes us to the giant panda wikipedia page okay all right now believe it or not we actually only have a couple of more minutes here so I, i'm gonna have to go right down to the javascript because i really want to i want to go line by line with this now, remember what we did in the example of the JavaScript? We have line 21, 24, and 25. Now, I'm going to do my best to go really slow. First, let's start with the input type text ID equals URL. That's this text box right here, okay? <clears throat> 
Input type equals text. It, this could be an email. It, it, usually it's an email or text. In this particular case, the input type is an HTML element that is basically a blank box that you will enter text into. So we had to call it something because when we refer to the JavaScript, the JavaScript is going to have to look for something and it, it's going to have to know its name. So we've called this text box. We, we have an I, identify ID of URL. Now let's go down to the JavaScript. Now I'm going to go. Now I, I tell this to everybody. It's really important. When I play gigs as a musician and I'm on stage playing my songs, right? I do this all the time. I'm a pro musician. And some guy comes up to me, it always happens. And he says, hey, Rich, my name is Frank. You're great. Oh, I like this guy. I have forgotten his name in three seconds. I don't remember him. I'm, I'm busy doing many things and I forgot. He comes up to me at the second set and he goes, that set was even better than the first set. I love, I got a friend, friend in Albuquerque that plays guitar. He even looks like you. You remember my name? I'm, I'm so sorry, sir. I don't remember your name. I, hey, my name is Frank. Great. Now I remember Frank's name for 30 seconds, if that, <laughs> maybe 15 seconds, okay? Now I play my third set. Frank comes up to me a third time and he's like, you're so great. I gotta go work, you gotta come over to my house. I gotta do it, we got my, my wife will make you dinner. You remember my name? Oh, I'm so sorry, sir, I, I played a game. Frank, and then I finally, the third time, that's when I start to remember. So we're gonna go over this, even if it's redundant, over it again and again and again until you get until you guys understand this. Line 21, line by line, we're gonna go over this. Button is an HTML element. Who knows what the on click is? Please tell me, I forgot. Nobody remembers event. that it's called what? You click. On click is called a event. Oh, what kind of event? It's an event the event fires a function called change picture. Now, in this, in between these, these parentheses here is some of the real JavaScript. This is called an argument. This is the information that's going to get sent to that function, okay? Sort of like the actual food that you get put in, your, that you put in your stomach. What is it? Is it pasta? Is it fish? So, so your body says, oh, I want to process the fish this way. I want to process the pasta that, right? So this, this is the actual information. So let's go through this piece by piece. Document basically says to the computer, okay, we're going to re reference this document in front of us, this entire document. It's an all-encompassing thing. Get element by ID is is a method. It's a, it's a method that will actually perform something. And it's going to find the identifier of URL. So we remember that, that the, the input type text field right here was identified and had a name of URL. So the change picture function is going to say, hey, document, Get the element by ID, URL dot value. Dot value says, what did they put in there? What did they put in there? I don't know what they put in there. And it's gonna send that information into line 24, which is a function called change picture. Now this new image is a name that the function has given to all of this information up here, okay? So document get element by ID URL dot value is the information that gets sent into this function, but it bears the name new image. It's basically like a way for the function to identify a lot of different stuff. The function says, what's this information coming to me? All right, just call it new image. All right. But in actuality, new image really means change picture document. Hey, get it, get that element by ID URL dot value, which is the information that was put into this text field. Does everybody follow that? Everybody follows that? Okay, good. I'm getting good at this. All right. Now let's actually see what happens here. Let's take this, let's take this 
URL, we're going to copy it, and we're going to put it into this text file. So now, here, here's the URL. The URL is a picture of Mario, and it's, it, I took it off of the internet, all right? So we're going to take that URL, and we're going to put it into the text file, the text field, and we're going to click the button, and then Mario appears. There you go. How about another one? Let's, I, I found an image of a whale. All right, so this is just a standard image of a whale. Let's go, let's go back to this page. Let's enter this. There's the whale. There it is right there. So that's, that, that's obviously interac interactivity on the website, but the real, the, the, the real meat and potatoes of the, of, of the JavaScript is line 25. That's where all the interactivity takes place. And you guys probably would have a good idea of what's going on by now. <clears throat> now, remember, the new image is the argument. The new image is all the information change. Get document, get element by ID, URL value, which is what we entered into the text box. And once the, the, the change picture function is activated, the computer says, get the element by ID called image. Now let's go back up here. Remember the original HTML element that we called image, which had a max width of 200 pixels. And remember it was the Panda. Remember it was that HTML. Remember that line right up there? We called it image. So let's go back down to this, this function here. Line 27, line 25 rather says, Hey document, Get that element by ID, the one you called image back on line five. And then set, set that attribute of source to the new image, which was all this information that got passed into the function. So let me go over that again. Remember Frank? Remember he came up to me? He's going to come up to us a second time right now. Hey, document. Get that image element by ID, the one you called image. I think it was, what was it, a panda? Didn't you call, didn't you have a panda image back on line five? Okay, good. Well, now set that attribute. That's called a method, right? That's called the JavaScript method. Set attribute. That's the actual function, the actual piece of code that does the work, okay? The method is set that attribute, which the attribute is the source. Remember the source, okay? Set it to new image, which is what? What was the new image? Anybody tell me? What, Arnav? Well, it was the it was it was the information that the user put into the text field. All right. So excellent. Okay, so there it is right there. Line 25, get the element by ID, the image, which was the panda, and set that attribute, set its source attribute to the new one, whatever they entered in. That's JavaScript, ladies and gentlemen. That's HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, all right? Now, it's going to get a lot more complicated from here, a lot more complicated. Um, the way it looks is going to get more complicated. The methods, the variables, the functions are going to get more complicated. The, how it all interacts with it, 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 it it's going to get immensely. More. But if you understand what I just told you, you have a core understanding. From here, you will always say, I think I remember what that guy said to me. That's HTML, that's CSS, that's the JavaScript, right? Okay. It took us 57 minutes to do it. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Arnav. Can I show you the code I'm working on right now? Can you show me that? Can you send that to me privately? Uh, That's kind of out of the so scope hard. of a basic webinar. Send me that code privately. I want to see it privately. And, and, it's um, in Sublime and oh, um, like it does not have a URL. Sublime is like its own thing. All right, so, so email me any any questions like that, please. Email anybody else have any questions? Judith, do you have a question? 
one point when you changed Mario, I thought you changed the the um, line above the photo as well, but that would be a separate. I, I, it sounds like that would be a completely separate. Oh, the, the Wikipedia page. Yeah. Okay, the Wikipedia page was just an example of how an anchor tag, an anchor tag, will just link to a separate page. No, no, I get that. It was. Don't worry about. It. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Arna, any questions relating to the, what you've heard here? Oh uh, yeah. Can I like um paste in the chat my code then? Okay. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I want to see it. I'm going to see. Okay, that's a lot of code there, Arnav. <laughs> oh yeah, that's like. Okay, so you uh, have a good understanding. Okay, good, good, good. Code so far. That's cool. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Jack, any questions? Uh, I. Emily, I do you have any question. questions? Anybody else? Steph, Paul, Gene, any questions at all? Hey, Liz, okay. this is Steph. I have a question. Yes. Um, first, thanks for doing this class. Um, my question is when we're you know, like practicing in the sandbox on here, how you have this coming up with like the tags and the events and the functions in different color, is that something that you're just doing for instructional purposes or as we enter them, will it pick it up and make it visually easier to see what we're coding? That's an excellent question. That's one of the glorious functions of the sandbox. They, that, that will, that's an identifier. Um, that's one of the many, like, like, for example, do you see how I just clicked on image right there? And, and then all of a sudden, yeah. it, all of a sudden it found image down here. That's a value that that's the kind of thing. Like, like it, um, the sandbox will determine here's, here's a HTML tag. It's decided that it's red. Here's an HTML tag decided that it's red. A, um, an identifier here will be green. A URL will be green. As you code, that's, that's a very valuable function. That's all sandbox. And all code editors have similar, um, all, have similar functionality. Also, if you notice, um, if you go to max width right here, um, sometimes, sometimes the computer will pull up recommendations. See how it, see it? See how the, the, an, an um, definition allows authors to constrain content within a certain range. But I find that all those definitions are always difficult to understand. One, it, definitions in computer coding are easy to understand once you understand it. But how do you get to that point? Play, playing is one of the best ways to learn. Playing. That's why I'm getting into code games with... Uh, with the coding den. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody want to take any classes with me? Okay, so the coding den, I have classes of no more than four people um, of similar, not necessarily a similar age range, but a similar um, development range. So uh, I have teachers that work for me. 